Welcome to Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis, and we've got your HCC news and information and some special guests coming up for the next half hour. Stick around. Promise you won't regret it. Frank Cooper, my co-host, is joining me this morning. We didn't get a chance to talk before the show started. Frank, how you doing this morning? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I had to, had to dispute some mortgage stuff in my house today, so I, I got off in just nick of time, but it's doing, it's going, going great. It's a lovely Tuesday. How you doing, Todd? It's good. It's good. It's a Tuesday. And as we mentioned last week, it's good to get back to some type of normalcy in our lives after the uh, subarctic freeze that we get once every 30 years in Houston. And we just happened to have one a few weeks ago. Man, you you were not joking. I'm still doing some, um, some stuff uh, regarding that. Uh, global warming is not a game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's crazy. crazy with everything that's going on. You know, I don't know about you, but I'm getting tired of these once in a lifetime events. It seems like we've lived through 10 lifetimes in the past few years. They, they should do a base, uh, based on a true story movie about Houston over the last 10 years, man. Yeah, I'll watch it for sure. <laughs> well, you want to give folks a little bit of a heads up about our social media before we get into the show? Absolutely, Todd. So HCC Up to the Minute is, is on social media, guys. So Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all of our major platforms. And also, for all the latest episodes, interviews, what's going on around your campuses, we're also on YouTube. So hit the notification bell. Houston Community College, Up to the Minute, HCC Up to the Minute. Hit the notification bell for all the latest episodes. Let's grow the show. All right, Frank, stick around. We'll be talking to you later. And we got a few things to discuss with the sports world. A lot going on out there, folks. So we'll be back with Frank in a little while. But we've got two guests today. Of course, uh, one guest, we mentioned this yesterday, but HCC has a financial literacy workshop coming up. And Daniel Scholl is here with us this morning. He's HCC's financial aid coach with the financial literacy workshops. Good morning to you, Daniel. Good morning. How are you? It's great, good to see you again. We spoke a few months back and we're looking forward to visiting with you and hearing about this event, I believe is coming up in the next week. Stick around, Daniel, we'll be back with you shortly. All right. All right, first we're gonna kick things off. We're gonna take you out to a Houston institution, the St. Arnold's Brewery. We all know it, we love it. Ryan Savoie is joining us this morning. He's the executive chef at St. Arnold. It's good to see you, Ryan. Thanks for being here this morning. Thank you, looking forward to it. Gonna make a couple of pizzas today. It'll be a lot of fun. So, you know, the big teaser I told everybody yesterday is you're actually incorporating some of your fine beer into the pizza. Maybe you can tell us about that and get started with the pizza. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the dough uh, we make with our uh, pub crawl pale ale uh, instead of water. We just swap the uh, the water content in the in the dough out with beer, and uh, it works great. Um, I'm going to put one in the oven right now. Does it give it like a rich, uh, weedy taste to the, to the dough? Um, honestly, the, the flavor of the beer kind of cooks out. Um, but uh, it, uh, I, I think that it, that it helps with the overall uh, fermentation of the dough. You know, just with the residual yeasts from the beers with the stuff that we add for the, for the, uh, for the dough. Uh, it works really well for us. Now, Ryan, for folks who aren't familiar with St. Arnold's Brewery, they know the beer, but they may have not known that you guys actually have a restaurant. Tell us about the restaurant. Um, are you reopening or have you reopened now? And uh, what's your hours and when can people get out there? Uh, we're open seven days a week from uh, 11 a.m. until uh, ooh, 10 p.m. Uh, and uh, most of our seating is outdoors, so uh, we're we're fully running um, and uh, people can come down. Uh, we don't offer tours currently due to COVID, um, right. but there's certainly uh, much to enjoy here at the restaurant. We've been open for uh, going on over two years now um, and we've had food at the brewery for seven, but the for big seven. restaurant opened, big restaurant opened uh, about a little over two years ago. Let's talk and, uh, about the, I want to talk to you about the architecture, because one thing when you're driving along I-10 just outside of downtown, you can't miss, miss the brewery, especially if you're headed west. It's on the right hand side. May, it stands out. You know, it's a Houston icon. Maybe you can yeah. tell us about the architecture of the place. Uh, well, uh, I think uh, Brock, uh, Brock Wagner, our founder, uh, had a lot of ideas that he wanted to incorporate. One of which was a traditional, you know, like a German style beer garden. There's a lot of big communal tables 
um, a lot of uh, a lot of green space, um, but also he wanted to you know incorporate parts of the, the industrial aspect of the of the brewing itself. Right. You know, so uh, it's a it's a metal structure, um, and there's all sorts of little uh, doodads and Easter eggs in the architecture that he that he that he put in to, you know, subtly reflect various elements of the brewing process. A lot of that is evident indoors uh, with some skylights uh, and outdoors with sort of the uh, the way that the roof goes and stuff like that. It's Tell a gorgeous me. space. Tell me about the menu that you and your team have created for the place. Uh, well, it's uh, pretty diverse. Of course, uh, we've got uh, a lot of shareable stuff. Uh, big emphasis on the pizzas, me personally, just because I love making them. I've, I've always thought it was a lot of fun to do. Um, but, you know, we've also got uh, a wide variety of uh, sandwiches, salads, all sorts of stuff like that. We do all of our own uh, baking in-house. We make all of our own bread, um, as you can see over there. That's uh, ACC student uh, Tony Miranda there. Yeah, so there, I was going to mention Tony. Tony's one of our proud students there, of course, with our culinary program here at HCC. Shows you those students. You can get real jobs while you're still in college because from what I understand, Tony's still taking classes. Is that right? Yes, he is. Yeah, he's in the baking and pastry program and has done a uh, specifically a, a ton of uh, great chocolate work for us for some of our special events. That's great. Let's yeah. talk about the, the seasonal beers you have and how you incorporate them into your menu with pairing foods. I know one I can think of off the top of my head, maybe the Christmas ale, the pumpkinator. What are some of the other seasonal ones that you guys do? Yeah, uh, well, the seasonal right now that we have is uh, spring bock, and uh, we're using that for our, our March specials. Um, and uh, for our March specials, uh, we've got you know, corned beef and cabbage, uh, black pudding and white pudding. Oh, that's great. <clears throat> um, and, uh, but uh, as, as they change, we, you know, we use them wherever they sort of are applicable. You know, right. if, it, if it works for, for the dish, We'll use it, um, and uh, saw, but there's saw, such a yes. No, I was going to ask. I saw somewhere in my notes that you also have a goulash there. Um, I've been trying to find some good goulash. Is that something that's always on the menu, or is that seasonal as well? No, uh, I I would imagine uh, that 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 would be seasonal. Uh, right right now, we just have the uh, the uh, Irish stuff for St. Patrick's. Okay. Season. Yeah, yeah, we're coming up around the corner. So, how's the pizza coming along? Do you actually? Let me ask you this: Do you put the um, beer in the pizza uh, in the sauce as well? Yeah, we the, the sauce is made with our art card beer, uh, which is an American style IPA, uh, and it, in my opinion, it's got a lot of uh, citrus notes to it, as a lot of American IPAs do, and uh, with citrus and tomatoes sort of go really really well together really easily um so that was sort of a natural choice for that. um and uh that has been well, i think we've got a fantastic piece of stuff. my personal Ryan, um, obviously, with uh, the last year, li our lives changed dramatically almost exactly a year ago with the onset of COVID. How did that affect you guys? Um, were you able to do food to go to keep operating? How did it work through COVID for uh, for St. Arnold's? Uh, we did do food to go um, for the first couple months. And then when we were allowed to reopen, thankfully, uh, the bulk of our seating, as I said before, is outdoors. Right. Um, so we were we were still able to, you know, have at even at fifty percent capacity. You know, we have such a large outdoor area yeah. that that we can still fit, you know, quite a lot of people in. Look at um, the pizza now. What exactly? Give us a rundown of the ingredients on that pizza. Uh, this one is uh, the one that, that generally I make for myself if I'm having something to eat. Just pepperoni and mushroom. Uh, the one that I just put into the oven is our Mucho Micho, which has uh, 
all of our meats on it. We make our own Italian sausage. We make our own ham. Wow. That's on there. Um, then uh, we top that with uh, some red and green bell peppers, uh, some mushrooms. Uh, I left the olives off because I'm not a big fan of olives. I like them just by themselves. Um, and I'm probably going to be eating them. So now that uh, Saint, now that we've got St. Patrick's Day right around the corner, I guess you make you still making the pizzas all the time, but you've got corned beef and cabbage and uh, maybe some Irish stew, a little of that on the menu. Yeah, and we also we've got the uh, corned beef and cabbage, uh, Irish beef stew, uh, a dish that's very popular in Ireland called boxty, which is uh, sort of like a potato pancake. Oh, that's cool. Uh, well, actually, it, it is a potato pancake. Um, and then, uh, of course, green velvet. Yeah, those. Ryan's. Uh, oh, and, and then the black and white pudding. The black and okay, the black and white pudding as well. For those who aren't familiar with the black and white pudding, maybe you can tell us a little bit about that real quickly. Uh, sure. Uh, black pudding and white pudding are uh, sausages. Right. Uh, uh, the black pudding is is made with uh, blood and oatmeal. Primarily, it's heavily seasoned like a boudin noir uh, in France. Uh, is, that's the way that they make the, that's the name of the blood sausage that they make. And then the white pudding is made with barley and uh, fat bread. It's heavily, heavily seasoned. Uh, and the description does uh, not do much for how delicious they actually are. It sounds like some people say they don't want to know. So, folks, make sure you get out there, support our local establishments, including St. Arnold's Brewery and Restaurant. Ryan Savoy, we appreciate you joining us this morning. Keep bringing in those no HCP folks. We'll be glad to help you out and supply you with more students. Will do. Come on down. All right, Ryan. Thanks for being here. Incredible looking pizza and great stuff over there. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we are going to move on to uh, Frank Cooper, or actually Frank Cooper standing by. I'm going to bring in Daniel Scholl. I imagine Frank may have a few questions for Daniel as well as, you know, Frank is saving up for retirement as well, Daniel. And that's really what we're here to talk to you about, because it's never too early to start saving for retirement. And I guess that's the big push you guys have with uh, your literacy workshops you're having next week. Yeah, well, so actually, we've got a we've got one for the staff. We got pushed back because of the uh, snowpocalypse. Right. So we're going to lunch and learn on March twenty fourth for staff, and we'll be talking about some benefits and retirement, and you know, kind of readjusting your credit, looking at taking a look at your credit, what's going on uh, through COVID, because that's that's obviously been an issue for some people that have had to right. dip into credit. But yes, it's never too late to start saving for retirement. I, I, when I was in retirement planning, I would hear all the time, oh, I've got plenty of time. But yeah. time either works for you or against you when it comes to retirement planning. And the younger you are, the, the more it's on your side. The more it is, absolutely. Um, we want to talk a little bit about the resources here available for our students at HCC, um, particularly the Swoop to the Rescue. I know this fund was established years ago. I remember it when uh, we had Hurricane Harvey, but I guess throughout the last few years with the onset of, you know, we went through Harvey, we went through COVID, and now recently the most uh, recent snowpocalypse, as you mentioned, um, students really need some help and these are resources that are available in the form i imagine of it's kind of like a scholarship sort of yes uh, it's it's a grant and um we do have swoop to the rescue available not all students do qualify um you do need to meet the qualifications they're listed on the website if you go to the financial aid page and you'll see emergency uh grants page um but you can get up to $500 to help you through an unexpected emergency, yeah. which in the last 12 months, I think everybody has had an unexpected emergency. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it seems and, like we all have. Yeah, I'm, I'm tired of emergencies. I'm ready to move on with just regular life and some normalcy for a while. You know, um, it's a staggering fact, but I know my daughter's a college student. And at one time during the, the shutdown, she, uh, even though she's an essential worker, she, her hours were being cut because yeah. they were bringing in cleaning crews and cutting the hours of some of the hourly staff. So she was fa facing some financial hard times. And I imagine this is uh, a lot of our students are going through situations that are similar. The hours may have been cut, they're underemployed, or in, in some horrible cases, they've lost their job and they're unemployed. You still have rent due. In some cases, you still have a car payment due. You still got your insurance due and all your other bills. Are there resources in the city of Houston that are available to help our students right now outside of the swoop to the rescue? 
Absolutely. Because, you know, $500 doesn't go as far as it used to. Sure. For sure. Um, and there are some great resources out there. So, you know, the, the main place I always tell students to go to is to contact the United Way of Greater Houston, uh, their helpline by calling 211. I know they got real overwhelmed last week and there were some long wait times, but they do operate 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. They've never shut down since they opened up. And they basically have a list of every resource that's available, uh, be it a nonprofit, a government organization, whatever you're needing help with, uh, financial help, you know, travel, medical, they can answer all those questions for you. They really have the most up-to-date database. There's also great groups out there like Catholic Charities. Um, they always ramp up for disaster relief. Um, Baker Ripley is the largest nonprofit in the city of Houston. They always have wonderful resources. Um, and a lot of times when the governmental agencies need partners, they often partner with the United Way, they often partner with Baker Ripley. Uh, Gulf Coast Community Services is another group that is a, is a huge nonprofit here in Houston. The only thing that I do caution students on is that, um, you know, we've been in this crisis mode for a year now. Yeah. And a lot, a lot of these resources are being tapped and they don't have the, the refunds or the, the resources that they used to have. So, you know, I've heard students say, well, they paid my whole rent two years ago. How come they're only paying half my rent now? They just don't have the money. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are limited funds, unfortunately. Well, you know, here's another question for you. Um, you know, you hear about the city of Houston voting for to allocate millions of dollars to help people with rental assistance. If our students apply for that, would they qualify for that? Um, and and how do they go about getting those type of funds? Like I know the county and the city both have funds available. Would you go through this uh, Houston helpline? Would that be the best way to do it? So for the county, they have a really good uh, website called readyharris.org and uh, ORG. And that's, a, that's, that's for this uh, county, that's probably the best place to go. For the city, they often usually partner with people. A lot of times they partner with Baker Ripley. Um, so I know the last time that the city did their rental assistance, you signed up through Baker Ripley's website, but it, it filled out within like an hour. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that. But our students certainly qualify. I mean, if, if, if you're going to qualify, you're going to qualify. Uh, it doesn't really matter if you're a student or not. Do you ever have students pose the question on you, look, I've got a limited amount of money. Um, my hours have been cut at work or I'm finding myself without a job right now. I've got these bills to pay. I've got my rent to pay. I've got my auto payment. Maybe I've got this, this, this. How do you get, how do you teach somebody to prioritize what you're paying off when you're in a crisis mode and you've only got a very limited amount of funds? Yeah, it's a, that's a great question. And I think that's something that as a financial coach, you know, we, we can really help with because when you're in the middle of that crisis, everything's a priority. It's sometimes hard yeah. for you to figure all that out. Um, we can really talk to you and figure out, you know, what your resources are and how best to prioritize them. Generally, you know, when you're thinking about, how to prioritize what you owe. You want to think about life critical needs, then non-life critical needs, and then obligations. So for example, you know, you, you're going to need to eat, you're going to need to keep your shelter, you're going to need to keep your critical utilities on. And in the case of a student, you're going to need access to the internet. Yeah. And any medicines that keep you alive. Those four things are really your critical needs. And then you move into, you know, you still need transportation, perhaps. You're probably going to need to keep your cell phone. You might need, you know, health insurance, life insurance car insurance, um, you kind of work through those, that group next. And the best thing really is to write them down in your own priority list. And that's something we can help people do, certainly students do. And then after that, you look at your obligations. Obligations is when you owe people money. And, you know, obviously if, if you're in crunch time, that can become the areas that you start cutting, but there's ways to handle that. You know, we, we can right. certainly talk to you about, you know, contacting your creditors. If you owe the government money, contact them, set up plans. You know, most creditors will work with you in a Especially time of crisis. Especially if we've gone through a crisis like the snowpocalypse, it's very well known that Texas went through a deep freeze and a lot of people suffered. So it might be a, a good time because creditors would be familiar with this. Is that right? Absolutely, absolutely. But they're not gonna, most creditors won't offer it to you. You have to ask. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, the human nature is, well, okay, I owe somebody money and I can't pay it. So I'm just going to hide it from them and right. not return their phone calls. But actually that can lead to problems. If you do talk to them, you can usually find solutions. 
What about insurance? And I know our notes say homeowners insurance, but what I found very important is yeah, a lot of us don't own a home, you know, especially sure. a lot of students. Renters insurance along with homeowners insurance. How important is the renters insurance? I mean, obviously, if you own a home, you've got to have homeowners insurance. Right. But let's talk about renters insurance too. Renters insurance is incredibly important and it's it's really inexpensive. And I apologize, my dog has seen a squirrel in the background. I don't know if you Oh, that's all right. Bark. Mine will start barking too, so don't worry. <laughs> Um, but you know, most apartments now require people to carry renter's insurance, which is good. That's been a good change because the building is insured that the people that own your apartment, they're taking care of their things, but, but your contents are not. And if you're on a first floor, especially, you know, we flood all the time in Houston, you know, uh, a, a pipe breaks in there, they're insured to repair their part of the ceiling. They're not going to insure your content. Um, average price on renter's insurance runs about $25 to $30 a month. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's, it's so inexpensive. If, if you're not required to have it, I would say absolutely get renter's insurance. Just gives you peace of mind. And once you have that insurance, it's important to uh, document things you have in your house. And I imagine that's pretty easy to do as well. It is. Um, you know, a lot of people don't think about that or, you know, maybe when they first got the insurance, they did an inventory. But now you've bought a new TV, you've got a Peloton now because you're you know, trying to exercise while you're at home. Yeah. You always wanna make sure that you have an up-to-date inventory. And the best way to do it really is to just put the video mode on your phone and walk around and record everything. And that way there's, there's no dispute with the insurance company about what you have and what it's worth. And um, I, once you record all that, you should obviously keep it in a safe place. Nowadays, you can upload it to the cloud and have it stored to eternity. But uh, you may want to put it on a flash drive, I imagine, as well. Yeah. So the Harris County Office of Emergency Management really recommends that you keep important documents uh, digitized, right? Because if you do have to evacuate quickly, you get to a hotel and suddenly you don't have your insurance policy information. You don't have your car insurance information. You know, you maybe you need a, somebody gets sick while you're in a hotel out of town. You don't have your powers of attorney. Yeah. You should have all those documents scanned and either stored in the cloud or keep in a flash drive so you can take it with you. And I would keep your, your inventory of content on there as well. So you can just facilitate those conversations with the insurance adjusters. And if you do have to evacuate during an emergency, make sure you save every receipt for every dollar you spend that may be reimbursable. Uh, that's something you'll have to work out with your adjuster, but hold on to all receipts. Uh, now, as we mentioned at the top of this, next week you guys have a financial literacy, literacy workshop, uh, learning how to rebuild or start up with uh, 401ks, IRAs, savings accounts, and more. Yeah. So, um, that we, I'm having one at Coleman um, for the, it's through the student life there. And that's on March 9th. Uh, we have one at 11 o'clock and three o'clock. Okay. And um, it was, it was you open, can get on the Coleman. for faculty, staff, and students? So the one, yes, the one at Coleman is open to anybody um, and it's online. So you don't have to be a Coleman student. Um, it, I just kind of organized that with the uh, Coleman student life. So you can get on the student life website with Coleman and register for that. And uh, yeah, we'll have time for presentations and, um, and then questions. Daniel Scholl, HCC financial aid coach, also uh, heading up our financial literacy workshops. We appreciate you joining us this morning. My pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Y'all have a wonderful week. All right, you too. Stay safe. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. All right, so we're gonna move on to Frank Cooper. Frank, you've been saving for your uh, retirement, looking to, I, you know, I get the impression though, one of these days, and it's probably gonna be in the next 10 years, Frank's just gonna come into work and say, I'm out of here, I'm retired. And he's gonna leave because he saved a mountain of money and he's just out of here. Is that gonna happen, Frank? I mean, that's certainly the goal for sure. <laughs> um, no, my mom My mom is very frugal. She, she's a frugal-minded woman, but at the same time that that's helped me um, as far as my, my spending and my saving. And I've been very blessed to work with bosses, you know, like, like yourself and other bosses in journalism and other uh, earnings of work who I have, who have taught me the game of, of, about saving money. So I started saving when I was like 22 years old. So, Well, um, you're way ahead of the game, my friend. Keep it up. Way ahead of the game. I'm so sorry, we've, we've got some things to, to discuss here. Um, one of them, filmmaking learning series that's happening uh, tomorrow. Absolutely. So, so Michelle Maurer is, is doing a series. These are free weekly presentations by local, regional, and national entertainment industry professionals 
And um, it's from noon to 2 p.m., March 3rd. And for more information about that, just email michael.cohn, C-O-H-N as in Nathan, at hccs.edu. All right, I'm going to skip on down to uh, Rec Sports because they've got some winter storm changes. As we mentioned a couple weeks ago, we were in a whole different world than we are right now uh, in the midst of a snowpocalypse. So we had to postpone a few things, and Rec Sports, they're on top of things. Self-defense class has been moved. It's 1 to 2 p.m. Wednesday, March 3rd. Uh, it's a free martial arts class. You can take that online. Also, the FIFA Gamer Tournament. That's happening Wednesday, March 3rd as well. And Wednesday, March 3rd, uh, NCAA, uh, looks like they're, oh, they're going to have a little um, spring talk, a rec talk is happening. They're going to talk about NCAA athletes. This is a good topic. Should they be paid? Currently, NCAA players are not paid to receive any financial benefits. Should that change? Uh should athletes become better students? Or are they better students? All that will be unpacked and talked about during this presentation. And you can sign up for it. We'll have the uh, links in the social media posts for the show. Don't miss that. That is noon, March 3rd. Sounds like it's a pretty good program. Uh, Lunch and Learn is happening, Frank, as well. Absolutely. So working remotely has, has an advantage for an employer and the employee. But talent engagement reminds us that it's not about eliminating costs of daycare pay care or the ability to do household chores during the week. So this workshop is designed to help maximize productivity while being engaged and recognized within the organization. That's also Wednesday, March 3rd at 1130 a.m. Check your emails to register. That's right. And uh, high school HCC transfer affairs, HISD seniors can learn more about HCC workforce and academic programs with these interactive sessions that dive into the admission process, financial aid steps, and much more. The next transfer fair, if you're a parent and have an HISD student, or if you know some student that's interested, the next one is Wednesday, March the 10th. We'll have a link to register in the post uh, in the show. Uh, Frank, why don't you get the next one? Because I know we've got some, I want to talk about some things with an announcement that was made yesterday. So I'm going to pull that email up while you're doing the next one. Absolutely. So ladies and gents, students, do you need, do you need uh, spring tuition for books uh, or anything like that? Um, financial assistance, choosing a payment plan that works for you. Go to hccs.edu versus uh, backslash virtual lobby. So this is very, very important. A lot of people are struggling due to the COVID pandemic. There are information about how to get funds for books, um, uh, financial aid, things of that nature. So go to the virtual lobby for more information and sign up for an appointment today. All right, so an important announcement came out yesterday and I wanna get into this because uh, uh, we want to talk a bit about um, what was said. And I know that uh, Dr. Kurt Ewan had sent out an email, and I'm sure you got that email as well, Frank. Um, let me see, I have it right here. Okay, and this was talking, this is a big announcement because it was talking about the future of the Flex Campus program, at least through spring 2021 semester. We originally had planned on possibly looking at students returning to campuses for the Flex Campus, but uh, Dr. Kurt Ewan, who is our Vice Chancellor of um, Strategy, Planning, and Instructional Effectiveness, he uh, sent out an email yesterday and says, all Flex Campus courses will be continued to, to be delivered remotely, which means online for the rest of the spring semester. This will help to limit mid-semester disruptions to course delivery, for these classes while also limiting our on-campus activity for the spring semester. This means there will be no on-campus no on -campus in person component to the Flex Campus courses for the spring. These courses will meet online on their scheduled days and time. So I know many of you had signed up for the Flex Campus. Right now, we're, uh, we're, just, we're getting close to ending this COVID thing. We're hoping in the next few months, things are going to change dramatically for this country and for Harris County, but we're not there yet. So for your safety, we're going to continue online for the Flex Campus. So that's one thing I wanted to make sure we mentioned during this uh, broadcast. But one thing to keep in mind, Frank, no matter what, students can go register anytime for our classes at hccs.edu slash now. So, Frank, have you noticed anything over the last couple of weeks or last week in sports that's uh, changed your mind that Deshaun Watson may get behind center again for the Houston Texans? Anything that has caught my attention as far as the Texans having a shot keeping him? Is that, mm -hmm. is that your question? 
Well, I, I was going to mention something, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. No, I have noticed the complete opposite. Um, it's yeah. funny. I was, I was on Facebook the other day. I was going back with my buddy and he sent me a meme. Um, and I, I don't watch, I, I don't watch SpongeBob SquarePants. I, I don't, I don't get the references, but there was a meme of the shine. Uh, one of the characters is, 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 is in the house looking down, looking down from the window and like uh, JJ Watt and Deshaun, Hop, uh, Deshaun Hopkins, I mean, uh, DeAndre Hopkins are outside as uh, uh, square, uh, square <laughs> pants characters, like waving at him as as he's trying to get out the house, meaning he's, as he's trying to get out, he's, uh, he's taking that uh, organization. So I thought that was a very funny meme uh, to be. It honest. would be funny to find him in Arizona if that ever happened, but I don't know. No, I don't, I don't really, I, I see it being worse now than it ever was. And the reason being, they just, they just cut his center. The guy that he interacts with on the on the offensive line, the most, the man who hands him the ball, they cut him yesterday. I don't know what their plan is. Like, yeah, there is the no. offensive line was already a huge weakness for you guys. You yeah. have no first round pick. No. You have no second round pick this year. Yeah. So how? Where, and then your your side your side cap is wrecked. Where yeah. are you where are you find the resources to to fill those positions? I'm so confused right now. Yeah, it's it's just an amazing situation. You just watch. Somebody wrote in the Chronicle yesterday. They called the term Texasing, Texaning. Yeah, they're just Texaning, you know. And that's that's really what's what's happening right now. There, it's just wow. You just see what's happening with this with this franchise. But yeah, it's a sad situation. Don't see it getting any better. And we're just going to see where it plays out. But on the other hand, Houston Cougars, they've got three in a row. They're back on the winning track, and they're looking stronger than they've ever been. I had a friend tell me last night that he expects the Houston Cougars to be in the Final Four. He thinks I could that see that. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Them, Gonzaga, and Michigan are the three most complete teams in basketball. Yeah, so, you got to get past Baylor. Baylor is going to be a tough one. I think. Absolutely, absolutely. Baylor is going to be a tough one, and sooner or later, somebody's going to get past them. But we'll see what happens, Frank. You know, we'll see. So you're you're not here tomorrow or or uh, Thursday, but you're back on Friday. Absolutely. Oh. Oh, for, for Houston fans who have who, who thinks all hope is bleak, I do have some good news for you guys. The Houston Rockets are eleven and twenty-two. Two years ago, the Houston Rockets traded for Russell Westbrook, and they gave they they gave the the, the Thunder a first-round draft pick, but it was protected. It was a lot of protected top five, right? It, the Rockets are so bad right now; they could retain that first-round draft pick. It's quite possible. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah things are getting better. Yeah, if the Rockets keep. Uh, playing horribly you know they can go for i say just keep tanking you know why not what do you got to lose at this point it's absolutely all- and keep that first round draft pick you never know that 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 could be the next james Harden, and 10 years later he could leave you too you know yeah yeah exactly next uh next to sean watson he'll get tired of uh your craziness and unwilling attitude to win so there you go all right frank cooper uh tomorrow on the show we've got robbie brombot he's the director of student innovation and entrepreneurship He'll be here to talk about the spring ideas pitch competition. Also, we've got, uh, we're going to be talking Tiger Woods tomorrow. Tiger Woods injury, our doc on the run. He's going to be here tomorrow, Frank. Absolutely. Chris Segler from the West Coast uh, will join us again on our regular fitness guest. He will discuss how pain is a part of the progress when beginning our running routine, but nothing is as painful as quitting. Yeah, so we'll talk a bit about that, but he's also going to be commenting on Tiger Woods. And, you know, they're saying Tiger's got a long road to recovery. Chris is going to be, Dr. Seglar, I should say, is going to be breaking things down on what we can expect possibly out of the future with Tiger Woods. All right, Frank, thanks for being here today. Absolutely, my pleasure. Anytime. We'll see you on Friday, but most of you, hopefully all of you, will see you tomorrow, 10 a.m., live on Up to the Minute.